He's got a francophile. No, no. Oh, no, look. Now, no, no, so no, no, Strider, take, take off your shirt. No. Your Too shirt. bad for Twitch. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, we're going to be talking about Steam and the fact that they've named the biggest games of 2018. There's actually a few surprises in that. And do you remember all the Flash games that you used to play, like on Newgrounds and all that? You tried to forget them, but they're still around. And like it or not, there's an open source project aimed at preserving them. That's kind of neat. When I say Super Tux, you say nothing, because that's what we're talking about. And want to know what the best controller for Steam games are? Prepare to be disappointed. And Epic Games made $3 billion in 2018, but they still show no desire to, sh to provide support for Linux. And also, there's another open source game on Steam, and it remembers me a hell of, of uh, Warcraft 2. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Vin, kind of warm man Vin. It decided not to be cold on this beautiful day, but up in uh, Canartica, Artica? how do we want to do that? Can, can, Canartica? Yeah. Yes, uh, that is one Jordan Swing. You know him, you love him. And all the way from L.A., coming in and out of tune, uh, the man with the pink shirt. Look at him. He's hot. He's sexy. And most importantly, he's not Pedro Mateus nor Frank. No, nay, that is one I'm Matthew Commandon. Just a Francophile ER2 replace. <laughs> Pedro. And hey, look, everyone joining us live, joining us, making that last special little bit known as uh, cooking. Suck. Hey, before we get going, let's uh, play what's going on in each other's uh, life organs in this special week once again. I got bad news for you, lads. I got oh, a no. bit of bad news for you. I do. Um, no concussed Vin 2018 came to an end. Oh, you, you, you <laughs> smacked your head a little bit? Pretty hard, man. Pretty bad. I mean, I didn't oh. take myself out. But, um, you know, if you've ever done any type of martial arts, or in my case, uh, you know, working as security, bouncing and stuff like that uh, in graduate school, you know what a concussion is. You know what it feels like. You know, over the hob, do you have those, like, um, cabinets? Like those little fucking no, doors? I know what you're talking about. This place doesn't have them. Okay. I have those and I keep uh, just regular chemical supplies up there. And I had had one of the doors open and I was leaned down working on something small, raised my head up, boom, saw the stars. I was like, God, all right, that happened. That was my adventure. What's new with you, sweetheart? Oh, I mean, my foot, my foot's still healing up. I'm going to try going to the gym tomorrow and hopefully nothing reopens and bleeds. Um... I got, I got, I got Jordan, Jordan's movie reviews for this week. <laughs> Venom needs to be more about Venom and less about Eddie Brock's girlfriend. Spider-Verse, very, very good. And happy on Netflix. Give it a watch. It's good mm. stuff. So on my side, I've been working on Lutris full-time on the past few weeks to look, uh, flesh out this uh, new uh, Lutris uh, 0.5 um, which is currently in beta. I released it a few days ago. Uh, and I'm going to release another beta now that I'm back home because I've been out of the um, out of states uh, for a few days during the during Christmas. So I just pushed out uh, the current state of the projects. But now that I'm back home, I'm going to start working back on it and release beta too. So like, uh, keep an eye on that. Hmm. Sounds mm -hmm. pretty good. Exciting. Terrifying. Um, unlike the horse who's not yet hungover, but has uh, expelled all of the holiday cheer. No, and I think and I think they're shivering a bit and they've wrapped themselves in a big old blanket of money. It's the steam! Hang on. Gotta do the thing. Uh, come, come on. You, you're pretty weak. This come on. Man. Wow. Slow clap. All right. Um, All right. Coming up first, man. Let's talk about those biggest sellers of 2018. Steam came out, put it in our face. We got a couple of things. How are we ranking them? We got platinum. We got gold. We have silver. We have bronze. And do we have anything below bronze? No, we don't. One thing we don't have a lot of is Linux up here on platinum. Now, I know you're saying, hey, man, I see Dota 2 and I see Danger Zone. 
and uh, they're free games. I'm not going to say they count, man. I'm going to be that well, person. Well, Civ Sticks as well. We got Civ. Civ yeah, Civ Sticks, where, where you build Civ a civilization Sticks. as the members of the band Sticks. They're delicious. Yeah. My lady mm. of the... Mo- no, um... Anyways, uh, yeah, there, I mean, as, as you scroll down, most, most of the Linux titles are under uh, Bronze uh, with, like, Crusader Kings and Gary's Maw. And well, we got uh, City Skylines. Yeah, Dar- Darkest Dungeon is on the list. That is a very good game. Or, very, very good that, game. that technically has a Linux port. I'm not going to say it works, yeah. but... Pillars of Eternity. So the, these, these are all ranked by gross revenue, correct? Yeah. Mm. So... Is it I, uh, revenue or number of sales? Uh, this is gross revenue. It says at the top. Hey, remember when Human Fall Flat worked on Linux? Yeah. Right. Oh, we we, we streamed that once or twice. <laughs> right. They're just like, nope. Yeah, but, but um, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, but Linux, Linux game representation. There's 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 a there's a there's a, there's a couple in uh, there's a couple in gold. Uh, I I guess people really like Total Warhammer. I, I know none of us did, but no. apparently it's a po- it's popular enough that uh, people were buying it. Um, yeah, nothing. Yeah, uh, what Euro Truck is in uh, silver, Dying Light. Well, I mean, Dying Light got like legitimately fixed up, so it's good to see mm-hmm. that it's in there. Well, um, Strider, you saw a couple in here that you just weren't happy with. Uh, yeah, because I'm looking through this list and I have a hard time seeing games that outright don't run on Linux. So I picked up a few. There's, uh, of course, PUBG doesn't work. Assassin's Creed Origin has a DRM that doesn't work. Uh, NBA 2K, all those games, they have a DRM problem. Paladin, Paladins has a anti, anti-cheats and Forerunner as well. Beside those, I'm pretty sure you can find a way to play all those games on Linux using either uh, native versions or uh, Proton or uh, Lutris installer with DXUK or whatever. But there, there's like so few games that you cannot play on Linux now. And I, I, I review, I checked that with my Steam library of like uh, 1300, like 12, no, like I have a lot of games. And went through them, I can't, could count like 10 games I could not count Linux. Well, so, listen, yeah. man, I know you say that a lot of games don't work, but I'm telling you, once that one game works on Linux, then, I, then I'm totes getting rid of Windows, bro. Well, they want PUBG, I guess. They want uh, Fortnite, of course. Uh, yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, I mean that that, that doesn't that doesn't have fucking all to do with Steam. I just want to I just want to get everyone to press F to pay respects for Football Manager 2019, which is going to be the first game in a while in the Football Manager series that does not support oh, Linux. That's sad times, sad times. This is not all the news we have from Steam, though. No, um, well, they they came out with a little bit of a companion piece for this last article. This is from the Steam blog. This is the top controller friendly games of 2018, and this article is like grossly mistitled because what it actually is is, um, it it uh, via Steam input they have the breakdown of who are using what controllers for what games, and it doesn't necessarily imply that these controllers are the best for those games. Period, because using Steam input you can work around a lot of issues. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a damn lie. Um, so is Dead Cells. Steam- it doesn't work with the Steam controller under Linux. Really? Well, you know, you know, uh, this is this is this is this isn't just Linux, Ben. This I'm is just all of listen, man. All, all all of Windows dumb. You know that vast, massively diverse ecosystem of Windows Seven and Windows Ten, and the one person who's still using Windows Eight because he was a true believer. Um, <laughs> but but a lot of a lot of the a lot of the games are the same because a lot of people who play games with controllers on um, on PC don't necessarily care about um, the game supporting the controller. They just want their game to work with the controller. Period. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mean, Strider, you you draw some conclusions about the the people who play games with the Switch controller. But yeah, here, here's, uh, here, no, here, but here's, is... the, here's the thing. Uh, one straight input, you just, guys. You just got to power through him, man. He'll talk over you. Just, 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 just one, one, one little point. Maybe, maybe try doing something about not using Xbox Xbox prompts for games that have native DualShock support. That's still an issue in Steam input, and I have a problem with that. Yeah, so I see that more as a personality test than anything else because the those, those like four different controllers 
they look pretty much all the same. So based on those results, you see which type of people like uh, by, uh, play which type of games with uh, which controller. And we see that the Xbox and Steam controller right, like more like PC games or uh, series games, whereas the Switch and PlayStation are more geared toward uh, very console games. And we see that you see the Switch controllers, like you got a, a lot of very like almost weep games, very RPG, uh, which you didn't find in the, the Steam controller, for example. So that's pretty interesting as far as like, uh, the usage goes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, also, I've noticed... I noticed, I noticed one more thing is that the, the games that are played with the Xbox and Steam Quarter are very similar. I mean, they're, they're like overall like PC games. What do you expect to, to play on a PC with a controller? So that means it's, yeah, the Steam Quarter has the same use. It's just a different way of playing. I mean, a lot of this also has to do, boils down with if someone else has like another, con if they've bought a console, what controller they have handy, period. Mm -hmm. So... There, there, there's definitely the convenience aspect of it's one this. of the beautiful things about pc is hey we we can do it all we can do it all yeah that 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 that, that uh, troll image of like oh it's an n64 controller and a playstation controller and like a sega genesis controller all plugged into the same unit that's actually possible in pc land that that is an entirely valid use case 100 percent. all right coming up next uh this is more in your wheelhouse your favorite thing in the entire world matthew and that's proton yeah so that that's a interesting custom build of uh uh, proton, so I don't know how to uh, pronounce it. It's is it a uh, uh, proton ignie? Gallium. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but the 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 GitHub URL is proton uh, three sixteen six ignie. So we'll go with that. And it's really like the the closer we can get from the ultimate wine build, because it comes with the usual proton goodness. But as the Gallium 9 patches, so what are those? Those are like patches that use certain features of the Mesa driver to wrap around DirectX 9. So that means you get really, really good performance on DirectX 9 games. Uh, it only works on Mesa, though. You don't get that on the NVIDIA driver. But if you can get this running, you get stupid good performance. So I tried this, not, not with this build, but with uh, just wine. And I got like 300 FPS on Devil May Cry, stuff like this, like it was that good. And currently, if, uh, until we have something like VK9 that will translate DX, DirectX 9 games to Vulcan, this is the really the best option. Um, that said, yeah, I mean, DirectX 9 games, they're getting pretty old. So even if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you won't probably have, won't have any problems running those games, even if yeah, you don't I, get like the... Well, 100%. Problems. I mean, when you bring that up, when you put that in the show notes, like DX9, that line's pretty much got that down. Yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, I mean the, the big advantage with using, with having um, Gallium, Gallium 9... Uh, in in this particular build is more more for low end systems that don't have as powerful a CPU, so you can sort of use the native uh, DirectX hardware on your video card with uh, with your Windows games underlying. Um, yeah, yeah the, the I mean I mean some, something like this definitely is a lot more impactful for um, Intel integrated in, in AMD users and people who insist on gaming on Nuvo. Um, but yeah, um, the, I mean this also this one also enables DXVK by default. And th this would be kind of interesting, though, um, because Strider, I got to agree with you. I think v doing something like VK9, implementing implementing DirectX 9 via Vulkan, is more in line with Valve's roadmap, more in more uh, in their wheelhouse yeah. than Im By implementing the way, like driver specific Valve. features. No, this yeah, is the fork of Proton. No? Yeah, this is yes. this is yes. not Valve. Yeah, for, for, from yeah, from uh, from uh, Pops Elfer. This is, this is yeah, the, who owns the, the one thing about um, Gallium Nine is that it, it requires some some kind of extensions to like your um, graphics card. So I tried it on the ThinkPad X two thousand X two hundred, and it couldn't work because the um, Intel 
GPU was too old to support features. So, you know, you got to have something a bit old, but not too old to be able to, um, to run this feature. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. That's official Steam. Let's get in some game updates. Yes, Vermson. They have an update. This is this is one of the one, one of the few open source games available on the Steams at the moment. Actually, and, and Valve, you know, it'd be a really great idea to get some goodwill with that uh, open source community by you know just hosting open source games for free, let, letting them use your APIs and whatnot. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, the, the, that that's a this is uh, this is a lot of gameplay updates for the most part. Um, they have implementations of seasons, so every couple hours in game, it'll switch from summer to winter to fall to et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a, they have a little icon that indicates whatever age you're in. This, this is like a real-time strategy game, sort of like, uh, it takes place in, I don't know, fake Norse land. So yeah, they, they implemented some, uh, they implemented, uh, an iron bronze steam age resin represented by a little UI icon. And you know, they, they, you can finally worship Loki in this game. I mean, his wife is a little dumb for not having two cups, but what can you do? Um, the, the other big structural change that comes with this update is that mod data and scripts are now contained or now considered separate resources. Which, I mean, in in the in the sense of modding this game, should make it a little easier because you don't have to bundle everything together. You can just say, "I have a custom script for this thing," or "I have entirely brand new resources," etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So I didn't know it was open source until I read that in the Steam comments, and. In fact, it's based on the uh, Stratagus engine, which I've known like forever. And I don't know, it's, uh, I've had some hard time getting it to run. For example, I don't think I've um, uploaded a build on Nutris for that. Uh, it's an open source implementation of the StarCraft engine. And this game uh, reminds me a whole lot of Warcraft 2. I mean, I think that the assets, um, if they're not like straightly, some of the assets there look pretty pretty close to the Warcraft two, um, like trees for example, like uh, the buildings have the same art style, so it still is pretty close, which is great because this is something we missed. We didn't have a Warcraft two um, game, like open source game, because we have like all those open source engines. Uh, I think there's one for a jump fires or. The Dune, or the Red, Red Alert, but Warcraft 2, we were missing that. So, great. I have to try it. Well, it would be Keep interesting. Free, so. Yeah, I mean, if we saw, but with all the crap that is on Steam right now, I mean, yeah, they should, like, be nice. Let in some more open source games. And this does have, you can buy DLC to support the project, because that'd be awesome of you. And it's a good way to keep track of your open source games. And I know that makes some people's heads spin. They're like, Steam, open source, ah, boom, poof, which is cool. All right, Dead Cells. We all love it, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Possibly. Strider doesn't like permadeath. I don't like permadeath. I like Metroidvanias a lot, so I am in conflict with this game. But that may change because, uh, yeah... This was going to be my favorite game until I learned, okay, this is a bit of a roguelite, which I completely hate. So this it's update... Because you're a bitch? <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much, but that's, uh, I mean, that's not the point. It's just, okay, this update brings I mean, I mean, you it a lot, a lot, it happens. Uh, it brings you a lot of customizations. Actually, you can customize pretty much everything in the game if you want to give yourself... Uh, like a specific inventory before a run, you can do that. Uh, it allows you like to, to customize pretty much any aspect of the game. And they warn you about this. And this is very valid for any game that gives you this sort of uh, creative mode. This can spoil the game for you. This can, like, like well, you know, well... ruin the fun of going through the game in a legit way if you haven't done that already. So, this will. This is mostly for the people who have like beat beat the game already, and they, they want to make their own stuff. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. What 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 I what I have taken to referring to is cheaty cheaty McBitch mode. Um, yeah, it, it lets you it lets you do all sorts of stuff. You can mess with uh, item spawn rates, enemy spawn rates. Uh, you can fix your level seed if you don't want everything to get regenerated over and over again. 
the way it's described, it reminds me a bit of like the mutators in Rocket League, where like you could make the game overly easy, or you could just make it super fucky and like completely unrecognizable from what it originally was. Um, they they also implemented another feature that I think was kind of interesting because when you go through roguelikes, um, you can oh, after after a while you can usually zoom through uh first couple levels fairly easily because you have those enemies memorized. Uh, they have a thing now where um for the first sixty enemies, uh, you smoke if you can just kill them all without taking any damage. Uh, you get extra gear and treasure to speed up your advancement so that you can just get to other parts of the game a lot faster, which I think is a nice little touch because, you know, the, one, 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 of the thing, one of the things that kind of cheeses me a little bit about roguelikes is the fact that, like, yeah, you got to start over from scratch. Mm -hmm. I've done this before. I've done this one segment. I kind of want to I want to practice the next segment. And this gives you, like, a, a decent opportunity to do that without horribly breaking the game. One of the things yeah, I noticed with this right is, I mean, it's on sale right now, part of the Steam sale, 20% off. So you get it for $19.99. Uh, Arthurian inflicted this game on me, which I had a minute to try to play. Try to play, because this motherfucker don't work with no Steam controller. It doesn't. This is a bug in Linux. It crashes Steam overlay out of the box. Took me a minute Oof. to figure that out. It's like, okay, so that, hey, look, the jump button works. The D-pad kind of works. Plugged in the X-Clone controller. Technically works, but the button prompts fluctuate between keyboard and mouse and the X clone or the Xbox type button controls. Now, they, you guys need to fix this because, of course, I went to the Googles, looked this up. I was like, yeah, this is a bug that's been around for over a year. This is not new. Son, I was disappointed. However, in the options for the food items, I kind of smiled a little bit because it has an option to change all food items to baguettes. Brilliant. Yeah. Strider mode. Pretty okay. much, man. Okay, I'm sold then. I can buy the, the game. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. All right. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's talk about a game that started to work again. Well, I mean, it was new. We kind of missed it last week. And I was like, oh, do I want to get this? And everyone's like, no, it doesn't work. But hey, it works again. Uh, Ballistics NG, Linux Hotfix. It's now live. They write, hi, everyone. Just letting you know that we've uh, pushed a hotfix for the Linux issues. They were mentioned uh, screen resolution. Let's see, handled by Unity. So it's sorted. Basically, it works, which I'm very happy about. Um, and if you're looking at it, two things that attracted me to this hey, it's a Wipeout clone, but it looks very true to the old school goodness of that. I know we've had attempts, even on Linux, uh, for this type of game, but it has online multiplayer support. It's $7.99. thought about picking it up and inflicting it on everyone tonight, but we decided not to. I might pick it up. It's cross-platform, too. Which mm -hmm. is nice. Do we need anything crazy to run it? No. No, no. No. I'm going to say good on them prematurely because yeah. something it's one of those things i want I, I want it to be retro i want it to be old but i want it to look like you know with an hd texture pack on link or some shit like that to be born on as well as was well yeah as retro. yeah um, I mean, the, the the screen resolution thing uh pedro constantly complains about this so um so i'm, I'm glad to see that some people are starting to figure this out um, what they were, what they were doing before was they were, they were, uh, using X-Rander to like probe your primary display and figure out what resolution it's running at so that they could feed a command line argument to the game via bash script. And that's, that's, that's a little overdone. Make, let, let Unity handle all that stuff and please, please don't just let us not see the Unity scream of nope. That's, mm -hmm. that's all we want. But we'll, I, I, actually, I'm not even sure this is Unity though. I could be wrong. Yeah, Send yeah. me some hate mail. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's every, every every time I see this uh, this game mentioned, I think about the other ballistics games. The one like from two thousand one. I don't know if any, anyone remembers. Oh, from uh, uh, what LGP. X, X versus Sever? No, uh, the, Linux the, the game public. It, it's before yeah. your time, child. Way, way right. before it was in two thousand one, and I think it it was released in on Linux a few years later, but mm -hmm. still, and it was like in a tube. It was a that tube and you could probably, rotate. I bought a copy and I think it was like, I paid 60 pounds I, I put, for it too. Um, it was ridiculously expensive. I think I'll, I'll try to put a demo, like the Linux demo on Nutris if mm -hmm. I can. Uh, but this is like much closer to the original Wipeout. I mean, this when you said this is a clone, this is really a clone because the like the cars, I mean, if you can call them cars or ships, 
they're really like they, they look a lot like they used to look in the original game. And even the studio, the studio is called Neognosis. <laughs> and as a reminder, the original studio that made uh, Wipeout was called Psychnosis. So they ever even made a reference to the original. Oh, the, the 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 guys who made Rocket League, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's another one. No, not this one. <laughs> all right, all right. Up, up, up next, last, last story of the Steam new one accepted of the week. King Eric. It is okay. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to straight up call it what it is. This is this is Babby's first game that he put up on Steam. Yeah. Um, and I mean that that's fine. It's it's a it's a 3D hack and slasher platformer. Kind a little a little similar to like Castlevania. There's you you run around with like a scepter whacking people, and sometimes you get lightning bolts. Nothing wrong with a little scepter whacking. A little yeah, <laughs> good, good old scepter whacking. Um, the the the, the trailer is a bit weird, isn't it, Ben? It's in, it's hardcore in stereo. It, it, man, okay, yeah, I put that on. I was like, what, do, do you know that you have the game audio in one ear and uh, the sound effects? Well, I mean, yeah, the background music in one side and sound effects game audio. And the other is like Whoa. taking advantage of that stereo, man. Hey, man, two channels, uh, super two channels. Boy, saws. Uh, I kind of when I saw this, I was like, this, this really looks like something straight out of the Amiga. Strider will love it. No, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the art style. I mean, this, I, I'm used to Amiga platformers, and I'm, this is nothing like uh, what I used to play. Uh, I'm not a, a big fan of those AG rendered 3D like uh platformers uh this this kind of art style they're cheap to make i mean you just render a few sprites in blender uh you put them on your game engine you're done but it doesn't look that great so and the animation looks like horrible so <laughs> yeah because because this, this is very this is very much like this is probably the first game that this guy has you know published or developed and released uh, Listen, I, I, man, that, it that, has that, advanced technology because if we look under the recommended, it only requires a 64-bit processor and operating system. No memory. Ad advanced no technology drugs. that Techno we have to die. Hey, man. Instead uh, of maybe, telling maybe us about game show, yeah. Stonehenge, why don't you just why don't we just get the fuck out? It's, it's, it's a giant granite birthday cake and a prison far too easy to escape. All right, coming up next, we are going to talk at length about Discord and Epic. And I forgot to buy popcorn, so I'm going to be without snacks. Welcome back to the news. Uh, we just got finished with that steamy segment. If you were watching live, um, Matthew, he said a lot about Lutris and super secret plans upcoming or something like that. Anyway, before we get into that, we do want to thank the lovely, beautiful party people making this show possible and again, keeping us from having to read mattress ads. I mean, I would be cool with reading Fleshlight ads. I found one podcast. I mean, Smodcast has the Fleshlight uh, sponsorship. <laughs> I would, I would, you know what? If you want to send us free sex toys, do it. I'm, I'm into it. I'll, I'll shill for y'all. But for those of you who just want to give us money and not dildos, you can head on over to Linux Gamecast. <laughs> money, not click. dildos. That's our slogan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> money for dildos and your chicks for free. Um, <laughs> click the click the support button. We got all sorts of fascinating links for you to click. Uh, Amazon affiliate links, new egg affiliate links, humble partner links if you want to just buy some stuff for yourself and support us at the same time. You can also give us some Bitcoin, some PayPal's, all that stuff. I'm sh I'm sure y'all can read. Nope. I hope I hope I uh, hope y'all can read. I maybe, gave maybe up, man. It hurt my brain. Maybe because you're listening to this, you can't read, uh, <laughs> and you need people to read for you. Go 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 find someone and ask them to read this page, and then also enter their credit card number. Read but you can so also head hard. on over to yeah. Uh, you can also head on over to uh, Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, join the legions of cool people, including Mister Matthew Commandant. That yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. the direction I need to point. Um, who are who are funding this nightmare fuel? Um, you get a bunch of cool stuff like access to the Discord channel or pre-release um or pre pre-release videos from our Let's Play series or Game of Who, our Doctor Who podcast that we're going to record an episode of. Monday-ish, I guess. Monday, Tuesday. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and um, yeah, uh, you also get access to the show notes. So you can see the sausage as it's being made, suggest stuff, yell at us for being uneducated, inbred morons, etc., etc., etc. We also have... Um, we also got a... If, if you buy some stuff off of our Amazon wish list, you can... Ouch. Drop things on the floor. Drop things on my foot. Nice. Wow. That's the injured foot, too. 
Beautiful people. I want to thank, um, oh. especially uh, we have a, a beautiful, beautiful Greg has joined us. And come hang out in Discord, Greg. We miss you already. One thing we do have is, um, Matthew, if you could show the lovely people, we have a little bit of merchandise. Yes. So this is a, the t-shirt I just got in the mail yesterday. This has got a Francophile. No, no, oh, no, look. No, 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 so no, no, Strider. Take, take off your shirt. No. Off your too hot for Twitch. Too hot for Twitch. Put it back. It, Put it back. It. Um, we get a little cut of that, and you get some merch. And for whatever weird, strange reason, you can have Linux Gamecast on your shirt, and somebody can walk up to you and you're like, get away from me. And they're like, no, you run Linux too, friend. It's creepy. It's creepy. It, it, I love it, it. it. It's a good way to keep the Scientologists away, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that'd be an interesting interesting way to go about it but thanks everybody for making this possible uh 2019 we're gonna be rocking and rolling into that we got some ideas and you are making it possible so let's get into some epic news pinky finger epic games the creator of fortnite banked a three billion dollar profit this is not net a billion straight up profit uh the game developers it is a bold strategy, Cotton, and that, man, you really do need to have uh, no script uh, disabled for this web zone, don't you, in order to read it. Thanks, TechCrunch. <laughs> Let's put that together. Anyway, uh, $3 billion in profit. Epic is most definitely in a position to take on Steam. That's kind of why we want to throw this in there, because they've released their store. Unfortunately, it's Windows only right now. But one thing I've done... Oh, geez, if I ever dye my hair, I'm out um, 100%. One thing a lot of people on the Windows version have been complaining about is the complete lack of community tools. You know, no forums or anything like that. So I want to call it right now for 2019 is Epic. It's going to buy Discord. I'm Please it. don't. Yep. Please don't. 100%. Uh, 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 I mean, it, it's in the realm of possibility much in the same way that there is a massive gamma ray burst from the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy coming to wipe us all out now. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, Fork, Fork Knife has just been the money printing machine that Epic always hoped it was. And now, now, now that you're, you're right, Ben, they're kind of in like this valve position where they have a lot more money than they know what to do with. And so they're going to, they're going to open up a store that they're not, that's not going to support Linux period. Um, like I, I, I don't, I don't believe it's going to happen until I see it. Well, we talked last week that you know someone from actually working at Discord got back on you know on Reddit, and they're like, "Yo, we are going to be adding Linux and to our Discord their version of the game store," and they're like, "It, it works. We're just taking baby steps." But here's the thing: I got to think about altruistic. You know, we got Steam. Steam does things like, "Hey, they release Proton," and that's something Steam input. For I mean, yeah, actually doing things that have furthered Linux gaming. Then we got Timothy D. Sweeney, who only seems to care about Linux when his company can extract something of value from it without really having to contribute back. But Strider, I know you completely disagree with this point and will defend I mean, Mr. Sweeney to I the have, end of I days. Have, I have no opinion about Epic Games whatsoever. <laughs> I am completely neutral on this matter. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. okay, no. Okay, that's chaotic, mean, neutral, that, true, neutral, neutral, good, neutral, evil, what? Oh, yeah. completely neutral, evil. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, Epic has been depressing me for the past few months because they're, they have so much potential and yet they, they do nothing about it. So if we go way, way back in like 99, in the Loki days, they shipped a game that had Linux in the box. So you went to the store, you, you bought Unreal Tournament. It, has, it had Linux in it. You put it in a CD-ROM, you could install it natively. That was it. Uh, then, I mean, the, they, they had the ports from UT 2003, 2004. All those games, you can still run them perfectly fine on any modern Linux system. So they are very good ports made, made by Eculus. And a few years later, they cancel the UT3 port that Eculus was making because, oh, some matter where, like, legal reason, some, anyway. Well, so this is what, 
I'm going. I, uh, 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 things go on. get got going worse. I mean, for UT like two, uh, two point five, like the all like Bioshock generation, they showed absolutely no interest in to uh, in Linux. And then things changed a bit with UE four, where they had this semi open source like source available engine that received Linux support, but not because they cared. It was because the community could provide the, the support. So it had like that support. And well, there's th and this constant. That, that, that's, that's, the, that's the funny thing, Strider, though, is that, you know, back when, back when they were announcing Unreal Engine 4, they're like, oh, yeah, it's going to be source available. It's going to support all these platforms. And it's going to be open source so we can continue to add more platforms. Linux support was one of like the, the vaunted features. And the fact, the fact that, uh, aside, aside from like Unreal Tournament, whose Linux support was arguable, their big game built on this engine that they invested time and money in that does not have a Linux client basically speaks to their attitude about Linux. The, yeah. the fact that oh. the tool that they use can produce a Linux version. There is nothing stopping them from producing a Linux version of Fortnite to get all the Linux using kids to give them money and, I don't know, make weird CG porn posted on the internet. Um, they, they could They could do this, but they choose not to. Uh, which to me says that you know even, even if they even if we live in the moon future where like they buy out Discord and they they start integrating Discord store features into the Epic Store, they're still even even if the uh, Discord store has Linux support, they're not going to put it in there because it's not worth their time, quote unquote, all three no, billion that's, that's dollars bullshit. worth of it. That's bullshit because they. they it's okay. No, they, it, they no could... it, it, it it is bullshit, but that's the bullshit they're sticking to, and that's what they will. They stick are to. sticking to it. Yeah, and and uh, the worst the worst thing is that. Tim Sweeney, the, so the CEO, keeps sending the, those like passive aggressive tweets uh, to the Linux community, like, "Oh, I mean, oh, I don't know, I mean, Linux, what is this? What is the best Linux distro to game with?" I mean, he's uh, he's a CEO who has shipped games on Linux twenty years ago, and he's asking what's the best distro. I mean, he's shitting. Uh, He's trolling Strider, that thing you try to do horribly unsuccessfully. Yes, okay, but uh, quitting Windows, he has shipped his games on every single platform except Linux. Mm -hmm. Is it that bad? Is every single platform, even iPhone? He's actively against it, but I mean, it's epic strategy. They, they are shaking things up. I mean, with the story, but you why? also got to go back why? and think when they released Fortnite on Android, they're like, you know what? You're not getting a cut, Googs. We're going to release it ourselves. I don't, I don't understand what they have against Linux. I don't understand what's their problem against Linux. What it's, did you, well, it, it's, it's personal, it, it, man. It, 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 Linux kicked their it, puppy. It's funny, too, because you'll like periodically it. see these tweets out of Tim Sweeney. He's like, oh, my God, Windows sucks. Microsoft is going to destroy computing. It's like, well, you got this yeah. big old other you know solution out there that's that works. It's but usable no. right now, but... Like, but like the people who bring up Linux will just get ignored in in those threads because they 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 just don't want to do it. Period. Mm. You know what the the conclusion is? Fuck Tim Fuck Sweeney. Epic. Yeah. Fuck Epic. That's all. You just don't uh, love them hard enough. If you send enough prayers and fifis their way, they'll change their mind uh, because uh, that's uh, been a successful strategy in the history of fucking never. All right. We're down with Lots theoretical shit. Let's talk about real world things that exist. Yeah, like uh, a like good Quake. old Quake 2, and this time it was Vulcan. So we saw a few uh, uh, a few years ago there was VK Quake, and now there's VK Quake 2. So that's basically the same thing, the Quake 2 engine rebuilt with Vulcan. And I haven't tried it because uh, I've been pretty busy and out of state like the past week, but uh, I expect it to be very smooth. Uh, like you would expect for a 20 year old game that runs on modern hardware with a modern technology. And yeah, aside from that, this is vanilla Quake 2. So don't expect any fancy features. If you want those, uh, I suggest Quake 2 XP, which is on Lupus. Uh, it has all those like fancy graphical features that you can play with. Uh, yeah, now. We have Quake 1, 2. We're just waiting for VK Quake 3. Well, currently, right now, we're waiting on the Linux version of this because it kind of requires Visual Studio if you wanted to get up and running. But it's in the to-do list. Uh, I think this was just put together uh, as like, hey, 
we can do it and Vulcan's neat and we're going to do it. Uh, but yeah. benefits, I'm not really seeing any other than, hey, look, it's Vulcan. Cool. It's, it's I, not... I, and, and I, I, I mean, I mean that the, here, 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 here's here's what's going to happen. This this is continuing the whole the whole benchmark of like, oh, does it run Doom? Okay, that it's a, that it's a proper computer, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it, it, it 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 works like the work like this ensures that if we as a species can escape the looming cyberpunk dystopia apocalypse and escape into some fucky Star Trek future, we'll be able to play Quake Two in the holodeck. Well, it I think this really does speak to the simple fact that Vulcan, unlike DX twelve, has the hotness to it. People want to learn how to use it. And you see projects like this from people learning how to use it. Like I need to get up snuff on this. The only goal that matters currently is that every single game in existence must run with Vulcan. It that will. Is. The X-12 is the and, future, bro. And it's the future. And we must head well, to that direction. And well, well I, I, I mean, I mean, technically, those DirectX 12 games can run on Linux with Vulcan. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it is possible. It mm -hmm. is possible. And we're very, very close. close. We, we are very, very close. When do you think we'll get a uh, Vulcan render for uh, Flash acceleration? Flashpoint project. It's a launcher. A launcher uh, for Blue Maximus Flashpoint. And I, I tried it. Downloaded it. NPM run build. No, those are words no one likes to play with. But this gives you a collection of uh, they've went through an archival project of trying to gather all the stuff from like the I wouldn't say early 2000s but definitely when, when did the flash game really hit the like mid 2000s 2004 through like I, 2008 I, I remember playing them in the early 2000s like maybe 2002 2003 ish mm. so I, I mean, but yeah, like they're 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 attempting to grab all like the games that were posted on stuff like Newgrounds and Stick Death and E Bombs World and all this stuff, um, and pack package them up as sort of an offline copy so that you can continue to play them. This thing even has like the Rick and Morty Rushed Licensed Adult Swim game that's called the Rick and Morty Rushed Licensed Adult Swim game. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, um, this 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 is a launcher though, so you actually need to download the project. Build this using npm, which hey, man. Um, what are you gonna do? Yeah, and point point uh, point the uh, point this point the launcher at the actual other thing that you downloaded with all of the games, and then you'll be able to launch them. Isn't there um, uh, something that's just kind of sweet about it though? That uh, this this is Electron to run Flash. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it's fitting, I mean, isn't it? The, the, well, the modern uh, the, day the, version the, of Flash, effectively, yeah. the cancer that is Electron. No, but in, in Rootrace, we have this web runner, and it's interesting. I don't think it's Electron, though. It might be NWGS. This is motherfucker runs Chromium on the back. Yeah. This is the way to run Flash games on Rootrace currently. So we pack this like all like package with uh, this runner that allows to run Flash games. This yeah, and the, I, I mean, all, all, all this action script stuff is being reverse engineered via HTML5, uh, CSS3, uh, JavaScript. So they're 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 like genuinely trying to get the old games running with like newer technology, so you don't have to have a sandboxed mm -hmm. version of Chrome that still has a version of Flash that can play these games. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this will also support anything I mean, from the web browser. It'll do like the Unity Web Player and things like that. Yeah, and it, and it gives you the option to download all that stuff too from the launcher as well. The um, yeah. I, I got almost that far when I saw that the uh, download to get like a chunk of the flash games is like I'm a little curious, but I, I apparently was not 35 gigabytes curious. That's, yeah, I I, I, I I tried. Where did you see that? It was 57 gigabytes. Yeah. Whole thing. And well, I ended up grabbing the version that like oh it'll download the games as they play them, and that didn't work. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna come back after 30 minutes waiting for. Well, I mean, even 50 gigs, I just didn't want to bother with it. I mean, what, 50 gigs is going to take, what, 10, 15 minutes to download? No, it won't because it's on it's on archive.org, so you get oh, yeah, pretty no. crappy speeds. Oh, no, yeah, so no, I, this, this thing downloads at the speed of smell, man. It's... Uh -uh. Well, I mean, you're close enough in LA, you could just drive up there and uh, with a thumb drive. <laughs> yeah, <I could laughs> or an just, SSD, right? Like, it, this is the concept of uh, IP over pigeon. Hmm. It's, IP, it's, I, TCP over carrier pigeon? Yeah. Right. Yep. The, the the Ben with his fantastic the latency is a bitch. All right. Yeah. Uh Super Tux, not Super Tux Cart. This is this is the problem with this game, is that <laughs> whenever I see Super Tux, yep. my brain immediately auto-completes the cart. That's it's the biggest problem of this game is that 
everyone keeps forgetting it exists because it's named right after the kart racing game that people actually want to play. Um, but uh, they they have uh, they have a brand new update. This is uh, not six zero. Um, they overhauled uh, their rendering engine. It's using OpenGL uh, 3.3 core and OpenGL S GL ES 2.0. They're hoping to get this running uh, via WebGL in the future, which is actually which would actually probably be a good thing for this game because be it's nice. not that demanding. Mm. You could 100 percent play this in a browser. Um, I almost I almost laughed um, when I saw that. Oh, one of the features is Linux binaries. But then when I actually went to check, they're offering an app image in a Splat pack, and I'm like, okay, that that's fine. You're gonna pack, you're gonna ship your game with one of those. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you shit for that. But it needs Previously, to be a you would need snap to... snaps of the future for. For, for people who don't care about their FS tab. Ooh, burn, but it's still true. Straight, are you excited? Man, I remember playing Super Tux. Actually, I think, yeah, that might have been one of the first ones. Like, back in the 90s, that. Remember uh, Super Mario? Oh, yeah. The, the one that was sued by uh, Nintendo? <laughs> yeah, the, remember Super Mario when it looked, it actually was just straight up Super Mario. Before yeah, they changed, they changed the, uh, uh, the sprite. On yeah, the, didn't like the new look. Uh, yeah, but that's that's the thing. That's one of the oldest games around, like in the open source games platformer. The the, the thing that annoys me is that the, the graphics kind of looked like bland to me, uh, and and didn't be like the art style, like this HD, like gimp, very gimpy, two uh, D drawings, <laughs> gimpy. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it, uh, bring yeah, out the yeah. gimp, Zed. And I like it too. I mean, it's an open source game, and all the closed source games have like thousands of skins and mods and stuff like this. And this game, we only got one style. What is up with that? I mean, I would like to to have like a retro platform, like a retro. I don't know. It's I, 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 I want Super Stallman Bros, man. I want, I want, yeah. I want like Let's make Richard it. Stallman Let's make and like palette swapped green Richard Stallman. Well, hey man, we we had the uh, beginnings of a uh, GTA Stallman RMS. Yeah, that never happened. Okay, I, uh, uh, I'm, my heart's broken. That's the thing. That's an update. Werewolves, man, swearwolves. They're, they're, they're wolf. Their castle. This is this is the open werewolf. It's from Jim Craster. Uh, you can check it out on his GitHub. Links to all this in our show notes. What is it? Well. If you've never been to a camp before, Jewish prayer camp or otherwise, this is Werewolf or Mafia. Um, it's a game where one person in a group of people is made the werewolf, wolfware, mafia, hitman, agent 47, whatever. And everyone else needs to try and locate them. And with every round, people, uh, it, with every round, uh, the mercenary, werewolf, whatever guy takes people out of the pool, perpetually shrinks the pool until someone, either the werewolf wins or someone identifies them. Uh, this is a browser-based version of it. Uh, they have a standalone version uh, that you can run for yourself. They also have one running on this guy's own website on openwerewolf.com. This is all, it's all uh, Node.js stuff. So that's a thing. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's it's Werewolf. If you played it, it's a, it's a fun little social game. Uh, that, 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 that's really it. Might be fun for the yeah, show. I remember playing it. I remember playing it like in, uh, in real life in France uh, with... Uh, but for Yishan, it was, uh, Are you trying to conflate here? friends with real life again? I've told you about this. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> if, it was, if, if I guess, die, at some point it was real life. Real life. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the old life, uh, not, as, not as friends. Anyway, that, that was a pretty fun game to play with friends. Uh, so I think this could be very good as a, a game for the Friday Fubar. But as... As a game, like as a video game, I don't see it working that much because it's a lot of like bluff, uh, bluff based. So as long as you can hear and see the other players, see okay, that's that's fine. But uh, playing it online without seeing people, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, Maybe I, I, I don't know because uh, what do you, what do you call it? the giant in the playground play by post forum had a werewolf game going on for a number of years. So I know it can be done. And this thing, this thing provides a little UI. Uh, so people can sort of poke at each other and shit talk and shit post because it, it, it is very much a social game. You need to like have people talking to one another. Uh, and it, gen it generally works if like you're not all in the same voice chat room so that people can have like private conversations and conspire and stuff. So mm. nothing like a little bit of um, conspiring. So Matthew, tell me about easy 2d. What's that? Easy 2d. That's a brand new, uh, 
game engine in C++. You hear uh, that, for, Godot? Uh, Your days are numbered. Uh, I think maybe not, because as Godot as uh, a lot of actual games were made from it, this is like a student project. So uh, it is pretty neat, but it's very educational. So it's, it is using the latest features in C++ 17. Uh, it got support for OpenGL 3.3, and it uses some uh, Go-based tooling. So very, you see, it's you see, it's very modern. But at the same time, if you look at the screenshots, it doesn't do much. So there's like not a real need behind it. It's more like a, okay, let's see if I, we can make a game engine. And and you see, like the the people who make this, they have tons tons of uh, cool projects. So it's a, a student group in India. And they have like uh, some video games. They have like some web projects uh, in a bunch of different languages. So I think it's pretty cool for them and for anyone like, trying to get into the industry and they want to learn a bit more than just scripting and Unity. I mean, that's a pretty good approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it very much is an academic exercise by a bunch of people in India. Um, yeah, uh, Rubius is what the engine is actually called. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's it's interesting now because we we're, we're, we're talking we we're talking a lot of shit about how Vulkan is like the hot stuff. This is what people want to use, and yet when we see people come up with these um, engine projects, they're all using OpenGL three point three or uh, well, it's GLES two point So EGL. It's simpler. It's I mean, it's a bit easier to get started with G GL than it is with Vulcan. So. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, when you're taking baby steps, I mean, this project was inspired by Godot. Um, but, I mean, when you're getting started, you're dealing with something like, hey, I, I want to learn about this. Yeah, you probably don't want to go balls out right into uh, Vulcan, for that matter, DX12. Yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. why I would I'm... like a, like a wrapper around Vulcan that simplifies stuff. What we need is Vulcan Spock blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't 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 Spock block me, man. Oh man, I, I I almost had it, and then you Spock blocked me. <laughs> got Spock blocked. Oh, okay. Oh, man. One last thing dicks. before we get out of here. Uh yes, all the dicks. Says I think who who wrote Sergeant Dick Move, Bloodstain Ritual of the Night. Honestly, I think I'd heard about this, and completely forgot about it. It's not really my so, cup of tea. So so this, this was, was a... uh, created by Koji Irig. Igarashi, maybe. Uh, Igar Igarashi. He was he was one of the people behind Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and as you can see based on the title, you know, Ritual of the Night. This was supposed to be like, oh yeah, no, it's a, it's another two D Castlevania Metroidvania thing, and their 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 whole deal was, oh, much much like um fantasy or fantasy battle or whatever that had one of the Street Fighter guys on board. Uh, this guy has this project has one of the uh, Castlevania guys on board, but yeah, no no Linux for us. Nope. Uh, this is uh, this has been cancelled. The uh, Mac and Linux has been cancelled from the latest announcement, and they, they they said that the reason was because they had some problem integrating the the middleware to the port. But uh, no, come on. If you want to get uh, middleware support for pretty much anything, you can get it in, and it, with a bit. I mean, it might require some like work, you know. What's supposed to what you're supposed to provide to make a game uh, to get this in, but no, it, you can't cancel a game out of like a middleware issue. This is uh, you, what you, I want you, to you do. Clear, is, you clearly can, Strider. That's what these guys are doing. They can, they can. They, they just did it bad. I mean, it's, I would like. I'm pretty sure there are some issues with middleware, and I would like that we we focus on the quality of those middleware and how to use them in game development so that it's not possible to use this as an excuse in the future. So that we get this like feature parity in terms of middleware so that any developer that tries to pull this excuse, say, no, this is not true. This is not possible. 
we got the well, and, and I, I mean, even, even if you give them the benefit of the doubt, okay, you know, we, we couldn't get F mod or whatever middleware we're talking about working. This is just poor planning, period. If you, if yeah. you say from Genesis that, oh, we are going to support platforms X, Y, and Z, you should endeavor to make sure that the tools that you are developing the project with will support platforms X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, you're just wasting everyone's time, and in this case, literally money. And that's the worst part. They're not even offering refunds. What you can do is you can swap your Linux purchase for another platform, which is useless for people who bought this game to play it on Linux. Linux um, yeah. And the, and even that, this in and of itself is a violation of Kickstarter rules, which, you know, don't actually mean anything because, you know, who the fuck enforces the rules of Kickstarter when they steal people's money, but... It, this kind of boils down to one thing when you're backing anything period you're, you're making an investment you're not buying a product we've all learned this the hard way myself included all of this can be avoided you you've watched us over the years we're like hey maybe if they have a linux is a stretch goal let's support it like oh we got to scratch that out uh that's not a good thing uh maybe if uh, linux is not a stretch goal we'll support it oh nope they're still fucking us over on that one Phase three, where we're at right now, unless the project launches, be it Indiegogo, kick anything crowdfunding, unless it has a Linux demo, we don't even give it a mention. Yeah. But apparently this had a Windows demo. It's pretty simple. No Linux demo, no box. That should just a good way to go through. Even if a project like this that was funded to the tune of five million dollars and it's shit like this that has caused uh, Kickstarter funding. It fell from $42.5 million. Wrap your mind around that in 2015 to roughly $17 million for the last two years. And I think it's dropped even more than that. If I can get over to the notes, we have... Yeah, a... uh, Renee says that it's $5.5 million. Oh, like. man. And, you know, don't, don't, they're, don't they're say saying, okay, but you can swap your platform. You can do that. That's not correct. I mean, I hope that's everyone who backed this on Linux. I'm going to say ask, well, asking that's for thing, a man. I mean, even that. I mean, the Vita's dropped. They dropped the Wii U support. This, 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 these are little hints that should tell you. But, I mean, Mac and Linux has dropped. They're like, but you can support your platform. Motherfucker, are you going to give me like a $100 voucher towards a copy of Windows? Because if you're not doing that, go <laughs> get fucked. I mean, I mean seriously. We were, all mentioning the that, yeah, and we were mentioning that during the, the pre-show. And I was... Going for a, if they had pushed a, a wine wrapper for this game, this would have been so much better. Like this would have been a, a more elegant way to to solve this problem. It wouldn't have been perfect. It wouldn't have been a native game, but at least they would have delivered on something, and maybe they could have like resolved the non-native aspect of it. Once they're not. The they're just released. not in the business of delivering anything. This is not god. Yeah, every time not, I, I see not. this, every they're just like time. They're, they're just in the business of showing us like something that looks great, something like looks like the successor of uh, Symphony of the Night, and not shipping anything. Well, you think about that, and you're, you're looking at quality. You look at it, a five million dollar budget. Every time, I love, I love Team Cherry. I, I'm dragging them out again, and I'm just like Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, because you're you're looking at one of the best platformer. Games, I'm going to say made, period, gorgeous, well-balanced, massive, done by a team, three, four people for like under $100,000, and they delivered that on Linux, they delivered that on Mac, they delivered that on PS4, they even put it on the Switch, so don't confuse, don't fucking confuse middleware with incompetence, because we're dealing with incompetence here, not middleware. M MT when, also when brings up a little, a little point, and you too can input have your input to these little stories of ours by becoming a Patreon. M uh, empty, empty, put this in because uh, people who backed it have a Kickstarter key; they can't actually leave reviews on Steam. Mm. So mm. there's no you, we, we, you, you, you can't even punish them that way. Bonus your editors can though. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. that's gonna do us. All right, coming up next. We're, we're going to play an actual Castlevania game that oh, yeah. didn't quite get ported to Linux, but, you know, Proton's the next best thing. As the curtains fall on this hellish year that was 2018, we got we got one last thing for you. This is the last Chairquisition of the year, where we're throwing chairs at Castlevania Lord of Shadow Ultimate Edition. 
What's your acquisition? Never heard of it? That's where we take a game. We tell you if it works, how it performs, how the graphics are, and how it controls. And we give it a score of one to four chairs on that. And then we talk about how we like the game. If we if we hated it, whatever. And we give it an arbitrary score of one to four chairs. It's so arbitrary. Uh, like I said, we're looking at Castlevania Lords of Shadow. It's from Konami. It's developed by Mercury Stream and Climax Studios. It's on some engine. You can pick <laughs> it up for some price. I didn't fill out this thing because I'm streeting off a piece oh, of paper no, and yeah and uh no no one sent us some keys uh, ven ven was nice enough to buy it for us so let's get on into it ven castlevania lords of shadow how's it run on Ubuntu? lords of shadow you might want to pick it up it's currently 80 percent off regularly retails for 29.99 wet stinky american cash as you want to put that in your face but over here on 1804 lts running a ryzen 1700 with 16 gigajoules of ram powered by my old crusty decrepit 980 playing it at 1080p uh everything worked out of the box and i mean everything i changed resolutions windowed mode full screen throwing it at it one thing i love about these proton bits running wine the vulcan nerve pinch man boom right the desktop easy to quit you um performance wise what are we looking at 1080p averaging about 120 to 140 that's with everything with yolo 100 percent out of curiosity, I decided to crank it up to UHD, 3840 by 2160. It's averaging around 45, not really playable. Graphics being Proton, you might be concerned. Maybe we got some glitches, missing textures. Honestly, I didn't see anything except for one where a light beam wasn't necessarily coming out 100% correct, but I can't ding it because it was like eight hours in i was like ah, i found one thing that was wrong and this is on steam's whitelist so everything's supposed to work and it's a dx9 title so you kind of expect it to be baked controls perfect perfect 100 percent title uh well perfect title i should say for the areola controller the steam controller since camera movement isn't an issue with this game and uh you know i'm sorry Val. No amount of like futzing with the settings on a Steam controller will make it work like an analog stick. So that's always a good thing to have the PS4 or an X clone, in my case, controller laying around. However, the lack of camera control is an issue, but not in the way you might think. More on that at 11. Perfect clean bill of health, which I was hoping to be able to say, see, these stupid Proton games are always crashing, but nope, not a problem. Four chairs. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of like the pro with Valve sort of handling this, um, and especially with this being on the whitelist. Yeah, on Fedora twenty eight sixty four bit, it launches, um, runs for, uh, at about one hundred and sixty FPS at ten eighty p with the GTX ten eighty Ti and the i seven six seven hundred K. I didn't crank it up to UHD. I probably should have, um, but I'm I'll I, I mean this DirectX nine is more CPU bound under Wine, so I'm not. That Venn's CPU is a little better than mine, so it may not have been as good. Um, graphics. I mean, they're okay. They look like an Xbox 360 game, which is what this was. I just want to say, though, you remember when Castlevania had, like, really good music? Like, I was very unimpressed with the uh, sort of basic Carmina Barana epic orchestral score. And I dug up the uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood soundtrack, which is completely fucking banging. I highly recommend if you play this game, play it to the Rondo of Blood soundtrack. It's so good. Uh, control wise, yeah, everything works. Uh, I was using the uh, DualShock 4, uh, my nice little silver one here. Um, you get Xbox prompts though, so rip those quick time events. You're gonna, it's gonna be a little closer than you anticipated as you're like, shit, which, which, uh, which uh, circle is it? Is it, is, which X is it? I don't know anymore. Who knows? Ah! Yeah, um, and yeah. Camera control, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the fun segment, but everything works on Fedora 28, so I'll give it four chairs, Stryger. Yeah, I have absolutely nothing to complain about on the department of uh, how it runs uh, or launches. It, everything uh, works the way you would expect it to, and, you know, it's a pretty old game. The, the PC port is from 2013, but it was originally made for the PS3 and uh, Xbox in 2010. So we are dealing with like a, a game that's almost nine years old now. Um, yeah, also wanted to test it on on a SUSE, on OpenSUSE Leap, and uh, couldn't get the HDMI app to, to, to work on the, on the TV. So uh, both tests were done on Ubuntu uh, 18.10. So uh, one on the Intel plus NVIDIA 
and the other one Ryzen and uh, HTI uh, Radeon. Uh, everything ran really smooth. Uh, on the GTX 970, was running the game at uh, 14, uh, 1440. And, you know, I didn't have the frame rate counter on, but everything was really smooth. The game was already programmed to be at 30 FPS on consoles. This is way higher than this. You, it just plays perfectly. So no, nothing to worry about. Uh, yeah, and other than that, the the game, the game really doesn't. Sh well, it kind of shows its age, but it has pretty good. And the PC port, like if you're playing with the high resolution, then it looks pretty damn good. Uh, the environments as well are well made. You know, it's got some pretty beautiful like outdoors environments, and. You know, in terms of visual richness, I'd put it in between uh, Dark Siders and Devil May Cry. So this is pretty good. You know, you got some some games that are pretty bland. Those, this is like quite good already, and this is why it hasn't aged. It has aged pretty good. And uh, also in the the voice de departments, we have like a very strong uh, cast with uh, Robert Carlyle. Which is from, um, like you've heard from Transporting or uh, The Full Monty. There's uh, Natasha McAllen, which uh, from The Truman Show or Californication. And the main nature is Sir Patrick Stewart. And he, he brings a lot to the game. So that, I, I had, that was a great touch. Honestly, that, that, was, that kept me wanting for more and like, going for more. The music was okay. There's like this, but it was kind of generic, uh, Lord of the Rings style. So I keep playing through the game and, and expecting to be rewarded with some uh, remastered version of a Vampire Killer or, or Bloody Tears because I know they're in there, just probably at the end game or something. Yeah. And um, for for the controls, the, the, everything is pretty solid. It's a console, it's a console game, so... Uh, the basic controls of a hack and slash 3D, but uh, it also borrows a lot from the old school Castlevania. So it's not uh, not really that a 3D exploration game. It's more like a pretty much 2.5D, where you have some liberty of movement, but it's not not really um, an RPG type game. So it's pretty much on rails. Yeah. Uh, Still, the, the the combat is enjoyable. Like it's fast paced. Uh, yeah, very very good on, on that department. Uh, also, since there, it's pretty much on rails. You you don't get any camera control, and this make makes it a very good game to play with the Steam controller. So good for that. For for Church for me. Man, you that, people... that, 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 that that was some War and Peace length stuff. Wow, right? Pedro, you, you challenger appears. Oh man, yeah, no, it's it's it it's rough. All right, well, there you go. It runs perfectly fine on Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. So good on you for that. Then, did you have fun playing Castlevania? You got you got quite a ways in. Um, man, I'm currently 14 hours into this nonsense. Man, I thought because I actually had one day off, and that was going to be awesome. I was, I'm going to finish this. And I'm going to just like, man, I couldn't do it. Uh, the I'm, I'm going to finish because I'm definitely at the point in this particular Lords of the Shadow where I want to see how it ends and I won't be satisfied unless I'm the one who's there. You know, watching a Let's Play wouldn't work. Uh, as Strider pointed out in the incorrect segment, uh, oh, hi, Patrick Stewart. That's the first thing I noticed. And it's like, I, I can deal with this. I can rock with this. And you get a lot of uh, number one making it so. However, uh, kind of rolled in with the thing quick time events can eat and that would be bags of dicks the qtes have qtes and that is not an exaggeration in this fucking game that is a legitimate thing to the point where you're just fucking laughing at it you're like really okay and uh, we brought up camera control there is no camera control in this this is uh directed by a rabid weasel on a meth binge is like an angry director in some of the shots where I'm genuinely I was like, why do you hate the player? Yeah, it's just not there. And one of the things, you know, Strider's like, you shouldn't have camera control in a castle. First thing they added to the sequel to this game, it's 
in camera control. That's the thing. Um, unfortunately, that being there, in, it is definitely on rails, but you can explore a little bit. Their faults, choices, path A, path B, all lead to path C. I didn't explore a lot because if the camera's not fucking with you, like, hey, maybe I'll come over here, you're dead. Mm. Yeah, you're not rewarded for exploration. Uh, lots of titties, fairy titties, snake titties, golem titties. Decided lack of penis in this game, but plenty of titties. I like to keep things balanced, but that's not how they roll. Uh, normal difficulty on this... Dark Souls art. I mean, if you try to rage into this, it'll rage right back. Now, I should say Dark Souls 3 hard, since that's the only Dark Souls that I played. And after watching Pedro play Dark Souls 3, um, I'm better than him. And I do want to point out, I do want to point out, uh, Dark Souls, it's not hard. No, never has been. It's merely a masterful job at exploiting a gamer's lack of impulse control. And if you can control that in this game... You can sit back and play the story and watch the cutscenes. Did I mention there's a lot of cutscenes? Because there's a lot of cutscenes. But 14 hours in, and I'm going to finish it. Solid three for the fun. I'm going to say check it out at 80% off. If I'd paid $29.99, I probably still couldn't argue because there's very few games that I put this much time into. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say this is Dark Souls hard. Dark Souls hard is about the first enemy in the first area botting you because you didn't understand its attack pattern. Um, and Dark, I, I call bullshit on that. Dark, Soul, Dark Souls is plenty hard, especially with the enemy placement and the fact that you have to know your timing very, very well. This is God of War hard. Uh, th uh, if you've ever played uh, God of War for the PlayStation 2, not the new one that came out. I haven't played that one, so I can't really speak to it. But the first two, God of War 1 and God of War 2, are very, very similar games to this. There are lots of enemies. You combo them. You do some quick time events. And I mean, yeah, the, this game does a very good job of converting Castlevania into God of War. <sighs> All right. So let's get this out of the way. Quick time events. I fucking hate quick time events. Every boss fight is basically a series of them. They break up the gameplay. It's so annoying because the, the worst part is, is that the Castlevania part, like the running around whipping werewolves and converting them to Jesus is the fun part. Um, I just hate quick time events. They're, they're not skill based at all. It's all just timing. And whenever someone's like, oh, press button X, my brain seizes up. I'm like, shit, what button am I supposed to press? I don't know. I just overthink them too much and it's not conducive for me to have fun. Um, but yeah, uh, the combat in here is actually really good. Uh, though they have, uh, it's fluid. You combo stuff, you air juggle them, you can block, you can parry. Um, there's a little RPG mechanism where you get points for killing enemies and then you can cash them into new combos and new uh, magic powers to like blind people and do extra damage and so on. And uh, when, once you, after you get to, through that uh, first golem boss, you get introduced to the uh, the health regen mechanic, which I actually thought is really interesting where um, you have a bar that periodically fills up and you can toggle it on. And every time you attack when the bar is full, uh, you heal and you need to kill other enemies and not get hit and block in order to uh, keep that bar high or even full in the first place, which I thought was a really cool way to like encourage you to not just tank stuff because you can 100% do that you can you can one, run in and just like win fights and you'll have very little health left um but you can but here is like oh yeah you can if you just play the game the way we want you to you can basically have unlimited health um i spent about 30 minutes trying to remember the name of the fucker who's the main character's voice actor it's robert carlisle but i was just like man this is the guy from stargate universe with full monty or once upon a time, he plays all the creepy dudes. Now he's playing the hero. It's weird. I'm not used to hearing his voice in this context. And yeah, Patrick Stewart's in here. That's always fun. Patrick, St I mean, Patrick Stewart, just as a, as a general rule, tends to elevate anything that he's in. So yeah. Um, cinematics, I found myself skipping through. I guess I didn't really... It, it's it's a generic fantasy schlock, and I'm a little tired of it. Um I kind of like I kind of long for the old days of Castlevania where it was a little ridiculous where you had like enemies known as known as like Paula a ghoul and Fred a scare and it's like oh no we're totally not ripping off these guys they're completely different people the this, this is just gothic fantasy done in the laziest way possible so it, it didn't the story doesn't win any points for me um but where the where the game shines is 100 percent the combat the exploration is pretty dumb though like Vince said uh there's lots of there's lots of dead ends there at the end of, after you clear a level there's like oh yeah you could have found all of these things 
Um, unfortunately, explore. Yeah, like Ben said, exploration is kind of disincentivized because the camera is really poor. You don't necessarily know where you can explore, and it ultimately just leads to the same place anyways. And like I did, I did the thing where I was like, oh, where does this go? Oh, I just backtracked this area. Ha! Huh, I just wasted a bunch of my time. This is very much Final Fantasy 13 esque on rails. There's good stuff in this game. There's bad stuff in this game. I I can't I can't give it three tiers. I'll give it a solid two though. There, there's de- there's definitely stuff to enjoy in here. And if you're a fan of God of War, you'll probably like this game because it's the same freaking game. Yeah, I'm really happy that we are reviewing this game because third person action adventure games happen to be like my favorite style of game, uh, like Dark Siders one and two. Those are great. Like the Tomb Raider are, are really good. Uh, all those kind of games, yeah, I love them. We didn't, we didn't get a lot of like native ports of those, uh, this of this style. So I'm pretty happy that there's one that's been whitelisted on Proton that we can just play. Um, plus, it's Cas- Castlevania, it's an all-time classic, and yeah. Uh, it's a good interpretation of the of the, what is this game. So it is it is meant to be a reboot of the series. It is uh, so it doesn't continue any of the previous uh, games that were released. And you see that it, it tries to 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 provide some elements that were in the first games but not necessarily the RPG elements of their later games. So you won't have a Symphony of the Night type, more like a Castlevania IV or a Rondo of Blood type. Uh, and it's putting this like platformer into a modern game setting. Well, modern, it's already pretty old, but it's, it's modern-ish. Uh, and anyway, the games over these past 10 years, they haven't changed that much. Uh, so yeah. It would totally be like that for a modern game. Uh, it is hard, but you know what? I mean, it's a game called Castlevania. This is, we used to have this series of games before the, the Dark Souls, you know, and those hard games. And yeah, that, that was Castlevania before the reference became Dark Souls for some reason. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty much the difficulty is all pattern based. So you just have to learn patterns like for a boss or for specific enemies or for a specific series of quick time events. And you got to like practice on them and you'll get there. Um, I haven't had a lot of chance to, to play the game as much as I wanted, but I know I will pick more. It's not a game you can't put down really because if you put it down, then you get to forget all the combos and everything. So you want to keep keep it playing until you you finish it. Um, but yeah, like like uh, Doom, like Tomb Raider, very solid reboots. I was glad to see that uh, Adio Kojima was involved in the project. And hashtag fuck Konami. It was it's it was before Konami became fully horrible. So good for that's like Very saying good. that was before the cancer full in the stats. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean Konami did release a lot of good games and Castlevania was so on a them. scale of one to four, so what would you give it? Three three chairs for me. Three chairs. All right. All right. Well, there we go. Six thousand years later, it is now the year twenty twenty. Welcome back, folks, Yay. to Linux Gamecast. <laughs> Coming up next is the hate mail segment from Jan- from December of twenty eighteen. <laughs> And for the last time in 2018, we're here to take a look at your feedback because, you know, as Pedro often says, we spend about an hour and change screaming in your direction. Maybe you want to whimper, squeak, shout in our direction. You can do that by heading on over to linuxgamegas.com, clicking the contact button. You don't need to be smarter than a robot now because the Russian bots are smarter than the other robots, but you can still select a show. We got this one, Weekly Daily Wednesdays. If you want me to solve your relationship problems... I mean, you got bigger problems than that, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, give us your name, your email, a subject, and tell us about your favorite energy pickle. We'll read it on the show. If you also want to get in touch with us, you can uh, hit us up on Patreon. We will always, always, always read those messages. So you should definitely do that. If you're Be warned. That's a threat. Yep. 
All right. So uh, up front, up first, we got we got from Mr. Mr. Frostclaw. He's talking about the wines, and he says you should give Strider his own show on the Linux Gamecast Network. Yeah, it's like the Fox News Network of Linux right. gaming, just to see what the fuck he would do. Strider, if we gave you a show, what would you make it about? I know, right? Um, I would like to do several different things. I would like either to to uh, showcase some uh, some games uh running either with wine or with open source engines so you, so, so you want to get high and play video games i mean that's what much, i do every yeah, thursday I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> isn't that what the other streams are about like the clearly yeah well uh, yes and i thought that, that that was like uh, uh what uh joran and peter were doing they were streaming no no uh P- P- pedro doesn't get high except on all the attention that he thinks he's getting mm-hmm yeah, I mean that's a one way. I mean it still count. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I mean I would like. I mean if we could get some, maybe I mean I don't know. I would like to get some multiplayer Quake Three with the open source engine. Or Welcome know, back to Quake the two. multiplayer Quake Three show every week. I, 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 like I, we, like, you you, you missed out week. on all those Quake Three broadcasts back in like the '90s because you couldn't do that because you're on dial-up. We right. live the glory yeah. days. Yeah. So I don't not not a day weekly thing. I don't know. Maybe this week it would be uh, Quake Three, and the other I mean, Zonotic is pretty neat. Or um, I don't know. All these those open source games. Welcome back to yeah, Linux Vanquish. gaming in most of the two thousands. Uh, first yeah. person shooters. Why not? Why why not oh, replay uh, some 20, of those um, twenty four hour or, super tux or if, uh, stream? Oh, oh, if we want to have a show that's like five hours. We play zero eighty. Z D. Yeah. 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 That could be that last like if you want to have something long. All right. Coming up next. Staging. Uh, yeah. This this comes this from, from you. Ven. Um oh. Ven writes, other Ven. I went to download Lutris and the website tells me ZOMG install wine staging or Stallman will punch a kitten. It links to uh, Wine HQ download. Uh, there's a page that doesn't say anything about installing, uh, staging the wine. Also, the second thing people see when they mosey over to Lutris.net is a two-year-old post that could make someone think maybe, just possibly, it might be an abandoned project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it is not. It is not. It has, it has been my main focus of attention in the past uh, month or so, and it is very much alive. And there's a, a lot of stuff I need to fix. I know that um, regarding the wine issue, I'm going to remove the recommendation of wine staging because recent wine is good enough anyway. Uh, wine staging doesn't have any extra dependencies. Uh, don't you already pull a version of wine already and you just use that yes one? but it we require to have wine installed just to get the, the dependencies on the system mm. and once you have them I and mean, we can use a whole bunch of different wine builds but we need it to be there at least once just so we get like the the original uh dependencies going so um yeah that's that's going to be updated and maybe we'll figure something to have some finer dependencies going without having the need for wine itself because we don't really need it. We just need its dependencies. Um, the, the other thing is like the, the homepage. So that's going to, to have a full redesign. And I'm going to actually remove the news. Uh, maybe some, put some news snippets from Patreon because that's where I publish the news now. And, or something from Twitter as well. Because that the the media's that receive um, updates, um, we're going to bring a lot more support for the games themselves, like what you can play with um, on on Notris, what can run, uh, some focus on games that are partially popular, like League of Legends or uh, Magic: The Gathering. Uh, those games, I mean, they are already very popular and. I want to to bring them in front. That's the the yes, you can play uh, LOL or World of Warcraft on an X-ray problem. So, so this is uh, going to so, have a full a full redesign. 
Soon. So 2019, yes. year of zombie Lutris. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, zombie, yeah, the, or Phoenix, maybe? No, I, you, I, 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 like, I like zombie Lutris. You can have like a. If you ever, uh, like if you ever considered it dead, because it never was, but it was. It wasn't my full time uh, job. So now it is, and I'm going to make it as good as I can and see where that goes. I mean, if that brings like a life to the project, if it becomes viable product for me to work on full time and I can like dedicate all my time on it, like making Linux gaming better. Uh, I don't know. This is like very experimental. Can open source development, uh, is open source development sustainable for a person? Um, can open source development do Linux? Accidentally the whole thing. And if you'd like to support Lutris, you can also do that at patreon.com forward slash Lutris. Lutris. Currently 157 beautiful Lutris patrons kicking in 470 a month. And that is awesome. That's always a fun experiment. And it's great, you know, for a system like Patreon to exist for independent creators like us. We don't have to walk out and read those mattress ads. Can you imagine Strider reading a mattress ad? No, it's 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 not even that. Like, imagine having ads in Lutris, like the Windows 10 thing, where you just oh, like, I want to watch a game. Don't you want to go gamble on like some sketchy website? Mm-hmm. You you you, you want to join J Date Strider? Oh come on, man! We, we could have like uh, Weasley instead of Clippy. Come on, add that in the next version. Hey, of it. I, I see you're trying imagine, to install wine. Imagine if if Lutris got for some reason Epic Games as a sponsor in 2019. I mean, no, because they don't care. They don't care about Linux. Nope. What if they did? What if they they saw that Linux what, was what, what, indeed what, what, the what most amazing What if each of my fingers platform? could transform into like a Dude. different laser beam that could? Do all right, I've things. already explained to you. You can't just ask me to kidnap people. All right, it doesn't work like that. You can totally ask me to kidnap people, though. You got to pay me though. On that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, for the last time in 2018, let's maybe cue the music. Possibly. Oh, yes. It works. Boom. You can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where we're we'll talking the nonsense with you live joining us. Uh, it's brilliant. It's beautiful. Hey, Google Plus is dead. Long live Google Plus. We miss you. You uh, also don't. Get a hold of me at Vince Stone on Twitter or uh, whatever I am on mass.linuxgamecast.com. That's the thing. I'm Jordan Spung. You can... Watch me wear uncharacteristically bright shirts on the internet at The Burning Fool on Twitter, uh, plus Drone Slug on Google Plus until they shut it down in April, <laughs> or at mass.linuxgamecast.com. You can follow at Frojo to see when I go live, because that's all I post there. And I post on my Saturn all the time. You do. And, and oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, I already use that. I mean, Google Plus, I used to be on that. And I mean, just on. No, don't go there. You can find me on Twitter. I post some stuff there at Striker, but you should really go on Mastodon and follow me at Strider. That's where I post. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's. We, we had a good 2018. Let's make 2019 even weirder. Huh? Yes. Sounds like a plan. Let's make it. Let's make it worse, man. Yay. Let's, let's make it like the best, even better than 2018, but in a weirder way, and it will be. There we go. Horse! Five dudes. Horse! It always sounds wrong, Steve, but it's so right. Our executive producers for 2018 are Thier and Mr. Foxdog, Empty Atomic, Mike, Barbara, Drummer7, and Aldeus. A lot of producers. So many, so many producers. Equally important. See, See if we can find Strider in this list. He's in there. Matthew. Matthew, there we go. There he is. There he is. Hey! Hey. Put your hands together. Oh, can I get real Pedro Mateus? Can I get can I get you from Dark? You've been doing that the entire thing. You don't have to do it like I want to 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 finish my job. That's fine. Space for egg in reverse. Frank's in space. Now he's getting Fuck wall people know. When people start sending us more hardware. <laughs> We're almost out of fuck wall, and I don't I man. 
that yeah no you, you gotta you know, like make it even more and more cramped every time you add people <laughs> to the point where it's completely illegible right just have like a magnifying glass set up like on top of it with the camera like, on it yeah, it's like what what was that squiggle again i don't even i don't even remember You're at the point where you just can't read your handwriting all right smile five dudes <laughs>